All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I was only given 10 minutes to finish this, so please put your seat belts on. All right. So we're going to talk about unlocking lupus, the role of interferon in SLE pathology. So we're going to uh, very briefly talk about um, interferon, which I gave you a detail during my previous talk in SLE year in review. So I'm not going to go in further details about the context, how interferon was discovered. But what I'm going to tell you is basically, interferon basically released by a host of cells as a part of defense against the bacterial as well as viral infections. And basically, because of this part of the defense against bacterial and viral infection, they are actually helpful to mobilize our innate and adaptive immune response. And thus, it helps to circumvent the bacterial and viral infection. So it is good for us to have um, interferon in our system. And very briefly, interferons really have three different types. Type 1 interferon we talked about. Type 2 is interferon gamma. Type 3 is interferon lambda. The type 1 interferon really is worked through the JAK1 TIC2 pathway type 2 and type 3 works through uh, JAK1 and JAK1 and JAK2 pathway. Uh, that is the type 2 and type 3 is JAK1 and TIC2 again, just like type 1 interferon. I already gave you the details uh, about this discovery of type 1 interferon, interferon gene signature 2003, and association with SLE disease activity in 2005. So this is the schema of the activation of the JAK-STAT pathway in the context of interferon by binding to its receptor, as I also mentioned before, interferon receptor R1, and then because of the binding of the interferon to this uh, receptor, and this is mediated through for type 1 interferon through JAK1 TIC2 pathway. When this JAK1 TIC2 pathway is activated, as you know very well from your experience in rheumatoid arthritis, this is actually uh, leads to the activation of STAT. We call the dimerization of the STAT. When the STATs are dimerized, they actually go and drop straight into the nucleus. And when they go into the nucleus after the dimerization of the STAT, for example, in JAK1 arm, it is the STAT1 STAT1 for TIC2 arm, it is uh, STAT1 and STAT1, STAT2, and they go inside the nucleus, and then with the STAT1 dimerization, it activates the gamma interferon activation site or gas, and then with the STAT1, STAT2, it activates, which is called ISRE, uh, it is called interferon responsive element, and this causes the induction of the expression of the interferon regulated genes and that leads to what we now understand based on the interferon gene signature concept which was first described in 2003. So as you all know, there is multiple genetic evidence of type 1 interferon in SLE. And you also know that uh, the important genes, without going in details, is PTPN2. And you know there is a toll-like receptor. I gave you the idea in the uh, early afternoon. There is toll-like receptor 7 to 9. And there is also um, interferon regulating factor, or IRF, those are uh, 5, 6, and 7. So IRF, toll-like receptors, PTPN22, and some other miscellaneous uh, genes that are actually play a significant role in SLE pathophysiology, which are associated with following the activation of type 1 interferon. And this is a feedback loop which is described how it drives the lupus and as you all know, type 1 interferon is principally produced by plasma cytoidendritic cells. And this is a part of the innate immune system. And also there are other cells that also are involved, including myeloid dendritic cells as well. The, some of the other players in SLE pathogenesis in innate 
immune system are also naturally killer cell, neutrophil, as well as monocyte. And of course, in the adaptive immune system, the key players are the T cells and the B cells. So when there is a cellular damage signal, and that is either by nucleic acid and also by cellular debris, the nucleic acid is generated from a type 1 interferon, which is actually released from the neutrophil, and that caused a phenomenon called netosis, or neutrophil extracellular traps, and also the cellular debris which comes out of cellular apoptosis, those nucleic acid that are released, which are also triggered by type 1 interferons. So there is a cross connection between cellular debris, nucleic acid, and triggering of activation of the different innate immune cells. When these innate immune cells are activated, they actually further go on to uh, serve as autoantigens, and which will be the trigger to actually activate the adaptive immune cells, and then the adaptive immune cells, you know, are the T cells and the B cells, and these T cells and B cells, those are actually lead to generation of cytotoxins, pro-inflammatory molecules, and autoantibodies. So this cell-mediated and humoral immunity, which is the T cell immunity and the B cell immunity, are also involved in the process of innate and adaptive immune system to trigger the whole process. So not only just one particular cell system, but a panoply of all the important players of the immune system, the innate, the adaptive immune system, the humoral as well as the cellular immunity, they're all associated with type 1 interferon activation. And this is not complicated, so I'll show you even this more complicated picture, which basically shows us that interferon is the key central driver in lupus pathogenesis because it actually associates, acts like a bridge between innate immune system and the adaptive immune system and helps to mobilize both the cell-mediated and humoral immunity. So with that, the implications would be that with the SLE have an elevated interferon gene signature. Oh, okay. So, oh, two minutes, 56 seconds, okay. Um, so the autoantibodies and type 1 interferon present before clinical manifestations of lupus, and this is the manifestation that I told you before, which we discussed in details. And with that, uh, these are the different manifestations that we know are present in lupus based on the interferon gene activation. So to summarize, ladies and gentlemen, while previously seen primarily as a B-cell driven disease, we now know that SLE pathogenesis is more complex than that. It is also a T-cell mediated disease. It also involves mobilization of the humoral immunity and cellular immunity. And also 80% of the patients, as has been known, to cause interferon gene signature. And also research has been ongoing to further understand better the interferon gene signature in the context of understanding SLE pathogenesis. Thank you very much.